Hello everybody. I want to talk a little bit about our lab this week. Uh, in this lab, you are going to be shown a bunch of pictures and you're going to be asked to determine the amount of volume that uh, has either been delivered by a burette or that is contained within a graduated cylinder. And I want to point out that these two have are slightly different situations. In the burette, you're always determining how much you've already added. So lower values are higher up on the burette and uh, higher values are at the bottom of the burette. Where with the graduated cylinder, you're determining how much you've added to it. And we're going to have lower values at the bottom of the graduated cylinder. We're going to have higher values at the top of the graduated cylinder. So in both cases, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start with the lower value. So if we have 20 up here, what we're going to do is we're going to go 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And then we can see we didn't quite make it to 26 here. The bottom of our meniscus is just almost there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go 25 and we're going to guesstimate this last value. So your last digit here will be one that you do not have a line for an actual marking. Okay. But just that you're going to kind of guess that it's close to something. So here we're going to do this as 25.9 and could this have been 25.8, 25.7? Sure. Sure. It definitely could have. You don't have to worry too much about your guesstimate here. You just do your best. Even if this had turned out to be 26 and you thought, eh, it's right at the line, chances are you're going to be okay. Here, we're going to do, starting from the bottom, our lowest value, we're going to go up 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and then I think maybe it's like a little less than halfway, so I'm going to call that 25.4 milliliters in that case. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at some balances and determine some masses. And I wanted to explain the two different techniques for doing this. So one technique is what they call tearing a balance. And this is a feature that's on a lot of electronic balances that you're going to see now where I can put a container on the little pan. Okay. It's going to have some mass associated with it. And then I just push a button that says tear on there. And what it does is it zeroes that out. So this is now zero grams. And now what I can do is I can add my chemicals and the values will go back up and I will get the mass of my chemicals. This is not what we're going to be doing in this lab, but they will ask you about this in the quiz. Okay, so you guys just need to be aware that this is a thing. Instead, what we're going to do in this lab is we're going to be massing by difference. This is where I just have it zeroed out with nothing on the pan. You would do that by pushing the tear button. And then I'm going to put the container on there and I'm going to see like the container has some mass. In this case, 77.25 grams. Then I'm going to add my chemicals and the mass is going to go up. So in this case, I have 87.48 grams. And then I just take the difference of those two. So the 87.48 grams minus the mass of the container. And I can see that I added 14.23 grams of chemicals. So one thing I want you guys to get comfortable with is going to be expressing equations with variables and really laying out what it is that we know or what are our known variables versus what are the unknown variables that uh, we need to figure out and whenever we're doing problems or working through chemical issues here. Um, so in this case, we're going to have the mass of the cylinder plus the liquid. We're going to have the mass of the cylinder alone, and we're going to have the volume of the liquid as our known variables. These are measurements that we made that are going to get automatically populated in report table GM.3 part one calculations. 
And the thing that they're going to ask us about is going to be, what is the mass of the liquid and what is the density of that liquid? So to calculate the mass of the liquid, this is just our weight by difference. We just saw we're going to get the mass of liquid by taking the mass of the cylinder and the liquid and subtracting out the mass of the cylinder. To calculate the density, we're going to need our density equation. So density is equal to mass divided by volume. We'll take the mass of the cylinder from the problem previously divided by the volume of the cylinder, and we'll get the density of the cylinder. We're going to do this for each of the five trials. And then at the very end, we're going to take the average of all those five trials by adding the density values that we calculated up here for each trial and dividing it by five, which is the number of trials. There are five trials, so we divide by five. So in this table, our known variables are going to be the final volume measurement that we took from a burette, okay? The initial volume that was in that burette, the mass of the beaker and the water, and the mass of the beaker. So we, we, we drained water from a burette down into a beaker, and these are the measurements that we took. And what we need to know is what is the volume of water that we delivered, what is the mass of that water, and then finally, what is gonna be the density of that water. So as you saw in the video, the volume delivered from a burette is going to be calculated by the final volume reading you have minus the initial volume reading. So that's going to tell us how much volume we delivered. We're going to use our mass by difference equation here by taking the mass of the beaker and the water, subtracting the mass of the beaker to get the mass of the water. And then finally, we're going to calculate the density by taking the mass of the water and dividing it by the volume that was delivered. And then again, we're going to average over all five trials. In the final part of our lab, we're going to be asked to calculate the percent error of our densities um, for both of the parts that we did. And here we're going to be given a theoretical density. Um, this is given to you for the first part, and you have to look it up in a table they link you to in the second part. And then we're going to subtract from that the um, average density for that part. And we're going to take this as the absolute value. That's what these vertical lines here mean, meaning that this should be positive. So if we wound up getting a negative, you just take the positive of that so that our final answer is also going to be positive. And then we're going to divide that by the theoretical uh, density. And then do not forget to then multiply that by 100% to get a percentage. And then finally, you're going to answer a multiple choice question. And my hint for that is going to be that when the percent error goes down, the accuracy is going up. Um, if you want a little bit more explanation for that, check out the video that I posted about this to, um, I believe it was last week's unit.